we have a lot to cover today. President Biden is leading in 538's new 2024 election forecast. It's a lot of fun to play around with. Tom Cotton is running defense for Donald Trump and was caught lying about Ukraine. But first, Don Jr. posted this video, then quickly deleted it, where he's making fun of Pride Month and making fun of his brother Eric's skinny jeans. Watch this clip. Well, the captions say, I know it's Pride Month, but WTF, bro. He deleted, but like a good brother, I have have receipts please follow Trump Sidery and please comment on Eric's pants so he's obviously making fun of Eric's mannerisms and Eric's clothing and then invoking Pride Month and you know I get the argument that it's just Don Jr. poking fun at his little brother but knowing what we know about Don Jr.'s other views on Pride Month and on LGBTQ people I mean what he said on the Russell Brand podcast and said for years it doesn't make a good edgy joke when we know he believes it for for a fact. It's like when I'm watching a show like It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia or Family Guy, a super edgy show with my liberal friends, and I know that we're both laughing at how absurd it is, how dark the humor is, and how nobody would ever actually believe this stuff, but when I watch those same shows with my conservative friends, I can't tell if they're laughing at the darkness of the jokes or laughing because they agree with the jokes themselves. That's how I feel about Don Jr. making this post about Pride Month, because I get that he's making a joke, but the joke is meant to obscure a deeper layer of homophobia that I do think Don Jr. holds. But to move on to this new election forecast, 538 released their official forecast with ABC News titled, Who is Favored to Win the 2024 Presidential Election? 538 uses polling, economic, and demographic data to explore likely election outcomes. Biden wins 53 times out of 100 in our simulations of the 2024 presidential election, and Trump wins 47 times out of 100. There there is less than a 1 in 100 chance of no electoral college winner. There's some really interesting charts, but I want to read you guys their methodology here. So the 2024 presidential election starts out in our forecast as a toss-up. While former President Donald Trump has a lead in most key swing states, they are close enough that a small amount of movement or the polls being a little too favorable to Republicans could result in President Joe Biden's re-election. So they're expecting movement, but right now it's close to a toss-up. Right now, now, Biden is favored to win in 529 out of 1,000 simulations. So 538 runs 1,000 simulations every time new polling data comes out to see who is most likely to win. Biden is favored to win in 529 out of 1,000 simulations of how the election could go, while Trump wins in 467 of our simulations. In four simulations, no candidate wins a majority of electoral college votes, which would throw the election to the House of Representatives. And I know a lot of you don't believe in the polls. And you don't think it's predictive of how the actual election is going to turn out. And I get that, but 538 does put that caveat in there. They do say the polls being a little too favorable to Republicans could result in President Joe Biden's re-election. Right now, we have to hope that is the case, but we have to work like we are five points down. We have to mobilize. We have to register people. 538 continues. Our forecast launches just a week and a half after Trump was convicted of 34 felony counts of falsifying business records in connection to a scheme to pay hush money to a porn star during the 2016 election. Since May 30th, he has lost ground in the polls, with his national margin in 538's polling average falling from 1.7 to 1 point on the dot as of Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Our forecast today thinks there is more room for Biden to improve, with economic and political fundamentals indicators polling his predicted margin in the national popular vote up from negative 1 to plus 2.5 three points, but he still lags in the key swing states, with his margin at just one point in Pennsylvania, the likeliest state to tip the Electoral College to the other candidate, well within our uncertainty interval. And with five months left until Election Day, there's still a lot of room for the polls to change, as indicated by the 3 in 10 chance of either Trump or Biden winning a landslide of more than 350 electoral votes come November 5th. But there are a bunch of cool simulations you can run or tools you can play around with on the five 538 website. I'm a big nerd for this stuff. I love playing around with it. I will leave a link in the description below, but right here we have a map of the United States and it shows what chance each state has of going red or blue based on 538's simulations. And if I click on a state like Michigan, it shows you that Biden wins Michigan 59 times out of 100. Trump wins 41 times out of 100. They ran 1,000 simulations and Biden wins in 588 of those simulations. 
population. So right now, Biden is just slightly favored to take Michigan. If we look at Pennsylvania, Biden wins 57 times out of 100, 566 out of 1,000 simulations, and Trump wins 43 times out of 100. A state like Arizona, right now it is basically a coin flip. Trump wins 52 times, Biden wins 48 times. We go over to Georgia, Trump wins Georgia 57 times out of 100. I think it was an uphill battle back in 2020 as well, but Biden still won. That's the 538 forecast. I'll be going over that every single week until the election comes so we can all stay up to date, stay on our toes, we don't get complacent. But here is a clip of Tom Cotton running defense for Donald Trump and his position on Ukraine and lying about the relationship between Donald Trump and President Zelensky. Annexation. So I want to bring this up because there are reports that what President Trump plans to do to end that conflict is to potentially um, push Ukraine to give up Crimea, parts of Donbass. Uh, if that is the plan, do you agree with that strategy? And would that be reporting, uh, rewarding Putin in order to wrap this thing up in the way that he intended to start it and take some of that territory? Is that just giving him what he wanted? Well, Shannon, President Trump and his campaign has said that any reports of plans like that are not authorized and they're not coming from the president himself. Furthermore, President Trump has said that he strongly supports Ukraine's strength and survival. He had a strong relationship when he was in office with President Zelensky. President Trump is the one that provided Ukraine the weapons they needed to fend off this Russian invasion that happened in large part because of Joe Biden's weakness. I don't think President Trump wants to prejudge what the situation will be come January, nor do I, in part because we have no idea how much worse Joe Biden can screw things up. We have to judge the circumstances as they exist next year when he returns to office and hopefully, hopefully when we have a Republican majority in Congress as well to make decisions about what best protects America's interest and the interest of our allies and partners. All right, every single sentence uttered by Tom Cotton in that clip was a complete lie. So I want to go down the list and debunk all of them. Firstly, he said that Donald Trump had a strong relationship with Zelensky. That is an easily verifiable lie. Donald Trump was famously impeached for blackmailing Zelensky, for coercing him and trying to get him to dig up some sort of dirt on President Biden that does not exist. Number two, he said that President Trump provided the weapons to Ukraine. That is not true. The vast majority, the bulk of the weapons provided to Ukraine have been given to them under the Biden administration, Donald Trump has not helped whatsoever. In fact, he has actively harmed our attempts to give the Ukrainians weapons by dividing Congress, making sure that nothing can pass thanks to MAGA politicians. He also has convinced the American public that we're just giving endless money, endless money to Ukraine and endless wars, that the war should be ended now. That does not help the public's perception of the war when they think that their taxpayer money is endlessly going over there when it's actually weapons. So if any Thing, Donald Trump has actively harmed our attempts at giving Ukrainians weapons. Tom Cotton claims that Donald Trump has never publicly talked about a plan to end the war in Ukraine, but that is not true. Donald Trump has said publicly multiple times he would end the war immediately when he gets into office. If he was president right now, the war wouldn't even be going on, which implies that he would negotiate. He loves negotiating, even though he's not that good at it, that he would negotiate with Vladimir Putin. And, and any negotiation with Vladimir Putin that ends in a ceasefire would necessarily entail giving Vladimir Putin some sort of land. So it's a slippery way of getting around the question. Tom Gotten said, how much more can Joe Biden screw things up? Joe Biden has been the one that has been providing aid since day one. If anything, Joe Biden should have provided more and more aid since day one, but he hasn't been screwing it up by providing aid. Donald Trump is the one who would act like an isolationist by either not giving any aid to Ukraine whatsoever because he doesn't want to get us in some sort of war war, even though it's a defensive war, or just ceding Ukrainian land. He also said this, find out what best protects America's interests. I think electing President Biden protects America's interests. America's image on the world stage was crippled when Donald Trump was president. He was rude to people like Angela Merkel. Public perception of him was down in countries across the globe, and that immediately changed when President Biden was elected. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment a blue heart, hit the subscribe button, and have a great day.